in rather straitened times, but it's still, I think you'll agree that the church looks absolutely fabulous with the decorations that uh, Brenda and uh, Hilary have done. I think we should give them a round of applause, actually. We're allowed to, I think we're allowed to do that. <laughs> we can't sing for, for She's a Jolly Good Fellow, but, you know, we can clap. So, um, thank you. They really do look... At, I, I walked in yesterday because I was doing a little service yesterday and I was, my breath was taken away when I saw it. I thought it was fabulous. So thank you for making the church look so beautiful for our Harvest Festival. It's a pleasure. <laughs> and your spot that I'm wearing a stole I've never worn before. This belongs to David Hull. Oh, and wow. um, Chris made it for him. Well, I'm upset now talking about it. <laughs> but it's got a lovely little dormouse on the, or field mouse yeah. on one side. Um, I'll show it to people at home. There we are. I was just showing it to people at home. There we go. And, uh, and it's got a butterfly on the other side, which is a lovely symbol of resurrection, actually. It's a symbol of the butterfly and changing times. So I thought I would wear that today. Um, memory of David a little bit. Your mercy and your spirit. For all in whom 
whose lives we see goodness, kindness, gentleness, patience and humility, and all the fruit of the Spirit, we bring our thanks, good Lord, for the mercy and your strength, for the life we have been given, and for all those whom you have given us to share it, we bring our thanks, good Lord, for the mercy and your strength. Please be seated. <coughs> Human sin disfigures the whole creation, which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. And so we confess our sin in penitence and faith. Almighty God, creator, shaper, and sustainer of all life, and loving Father, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have been careless with the creation you so lovingly crafted, and deaf to its song of grace. We have taken to satisfy our selfish desires rather than our need, and be indifferent to the consequences. As your world's song of praise has been silenced, because of our greed and carelessness, the world is hurting. And many of your most vulnerable children are suffering as a result. Please forgive our indifference. Almighty God, creator, shaper and sustainer of all life and loving Father, we thank you for the forgiveness won for us by your Son, the Redeemer of all creation. We receive your grace to us and your love for us as we are. Change us now into what you would have us be. Move us to love and care for your world, and make us ready to work for the good of all creation, through the love and power of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So as we stand, let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks to those who produce our food, for farmers and fishermen, factory and shop workers. We pray for those for whom this has been a difficult year, Farmers who have battled the weather to grow food, delivery drivers and shop workers who kept working despite the pandemic. Help us to value and support each other. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for our meeting. <coughs> The first reading is from Deuteronomy, chapter 8. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will like nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill, and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you've eaten your fill, and have built fine houses and live in them. And when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have 
is multiplied. Then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, and he is doing today. Here ends the first lesson. The second is from Corinthians 2. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God's able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It's the end of the second lesson. Thanks be to God. He stand for the Gospel reading. <laughs> alleluia, alleluia. God has spoken to us through his Son, whom he created, with whom, through whom he created the worlds. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. The God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. He said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more value are you than the birds? Or can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. 
But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> One of my favourite gospel readings, that. Have you ever been on an assault course? <laughs> I can remember going on one when I was on a guide camp as a teenager, and the part I hated the most was the massive scramble net. Now, it looked relatively easy. You climbed up like a ladder over the top and down the other side. What I hadn't factored in when I went on it was that I wasn't going to have the net all to myself. On my own, it would have been quite easy, but with other people climbing up around me and on the other side, what should have been quite straightforward was really difficult. When I moved, a part of the net on the other side moved. When someone else moved, the part I was on would begin to shake. Doing the assault course among other more athletic kids made it harder too. I wasn't very confident, and as soon as some of them saw my fear, they reveled in deliberately shaking the net to make my ascent more difficult. What happened on one part of the net affected what happened on the other side. Well, we have experienced something akin to this feeling of insecurity and worry in 2020 across the globe. What happened on one part of the world has come to affect us all. Back in January, coronavirus was a story from East Asia, one of the last headlines on the news bulletins. It was easy at the time for us to think, oh, that's a bit sad for them, but then to put it to the back of our minds as a foreign news story that we needn't worry too much about. But what we have realised is that we live in a globalised world. Like the scramble net I climbed up, if one part of the globe is affected, we feel our part shaken as well. We are more connected as a human race than we have ever been before. Every country has been affected in one way or another by the pandemic. We have shared this experience with people all over the world. Two problems in the world have been really highlighted in 2020. The first is the problem of greed. And the second is the problem of anxiety. It is greed that has led to the pandemic happening. Our rapacious desire for new products, our desire to keep consuming, expecting delivery to our doors within hours of ordering things, has led to a massive reduction in biodiversity, leading to many species becoming extinct. Our constant purchase of clothes that might only be worn once is polluting the rivers and the seas. Our addiction to plastic is choking our wildlife. And there is evidence that the coronavirus was caused by these negative human behaviours. Alongside the greed of we humans has come a worldwide pandemic of anxiety. Our young people are struggling more than ever before with mental health, and even children in primary school are now reporting problems with mental health and anxiety at a time in their lives when they should be carefree. Greed and anxiety. Two massive problems blighting our society and our planet. This is what Jesus is talking about in the Gospel reading we heard today. He actually links the two things together, greed and anxiety. First, he tackles greed. He points out to someone concerned about their inheritance, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Jesus then tells a parable which is as relevant today as when he told it. A man is so focused on his possessions that he forgets what is really important in life and the fact that he can't take any of it with him when he dies. The man's focus is on the things he owns rather than his own soul. We live in the privileged, developed world, when, and when lockdown happened, many of us experienced a lack of freedom and supply of goods for the first time, or at least for the first time in many years. I certainly began to appreciate things that I had taken for granted before. 
I started to explore the local area for my daily exercise. It felt a little as if the natural world was given a break from human recklessness. We heard no aeroplanes overhead, do you remember that? Bird song seemed to be louder. Did you notice that? There was far less traffic on the M1. And we saw photos from the canals of Venice teeming with fish and other wildlife. For a moment, we were reminded that one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. What we began to miss were the little things, and we're still missing them now, being able to hug our loved ones, celebrating a birthday with a cake and a meal out, being able to drop in on a friend for a cup of tea and a catch up. During lockdown, we were given a little glimpse of how the natural world should be. We should see it as a big wake-up call to change our behaviour. I'm challenging myself again this year to make a change, to consider the needs of our shared home, planet Earth, over my own personal short-term desires. Last year, I chose to stop buying single-use plastic bottles, and on the whole, I've managed it. Not always, but most of the time, I've managed it. And as we said last year, choosing one thing to change is the easiest thing to do. And then from that come other changes. This year, I want to try to commit to buying my fruit and veg from local producers rather than from the supermarket. We can each choose a behaviour to change. And change is possible. Look at how we've learnt to adapt our behaviour this year. Now, when we leave the house, we say keys, wallet, phone, mask, we can change our behaviour. We need to change our behaviour. Here we go. If we continue in the way things were before the pandemic, we are only going to see more of the same. So let's take heed of Jesus' warnings about greed. After speaking of greed, Jesus addresses the attendant problem that we have, the problem of anxiety. And it's a bit tempting to read this part of Luke's Gospel as like the Bobby Darren song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. But that's not quite what Jesus is saying here. As much of Jesus' teaching that we've been exploring over the past few weeks, what he is saying is that it is all a matter of where you focus your attention. Is your attention on accumulation of possessions or is it on God? Jesus says that these things will be given to you. Our Heavenly Father knows that we need food and clothing, but we mustn't worry our life away about getting those things. Jesus doesn't want us to be anxious. Jesus knows that this is something that can be really crippling to us, and he reminds us that if God can care for the birds of the air so well, then how much more will he care for us, his beloved children? We were not made to be tight little balls of anxiety, but to be people who can live life to the full, in the full light of God's love. So this harvest, we acknowledge the wreckage caused to our world by greed, and our part in that, and we each commit again to put our focus on God's kingdom, on God's way, knowing that our Creator will always provide. So let us stand together and I always feel that as we say the creed together these words are written in the sort of fourth century and so we're connecting ourselves with all those people who have gone before and you think of this church, this church has been here since 1138, think of what these walls have seen, they've seen the Black Death, they've seen a couple of world wars, they've seen an awful lot and as we say these words we're joining in with Christians all around the world as well. And so we declare our faith together in solidarity with all of those who have gone before and around the world. We believe in the one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we come to pray. <coughs> Before I read the harvest intercessions, um, just to mention that Malcolm Pyatt, who is on placement with us, is being ordained deacon this morning. Now, poor old Malcolm had his ordination postponed twice before today, so I'm sure it's a day of great joy for him. And I will be going over to Birmingham this evening. There's a special welcome, his first service um, as deacon will be tonight over at Birmingham, and they've invited me to attend. So I'll be attending on behalf of all of us, and I'm sure we will wish him all the best in his ministry. So let's just say a quick prayer for Malcolm and the other candidates that are being ordained this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for Malcolm. Thank you that you've called him to this ministry. We pray that you would be with him today and that you would bless his ministry among the people of St Michael and all angels in Brimington. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So let us pray to God, the Lord of the harvest, that he will bring to fruition all that he desires for his creation. Lord of creation, we see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. We pray for your church, that it may be made ready to gather fruit for eternal life. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. You have created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in giving us dominion over the earth. We pray for the world, that we may honour and share its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Your Son has promised that the Spirit will lead us into all truth. We pray for the community in which you have set us, for one another and for ourselves. In a moment's quiet, I that you pray for the person sitting next to you. we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. You have given your people a rich land, yet by sin we have made a world of suffering and sorrow. We pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. We pray for all those whose businesses have been affected by the pandemic. We pray for those struggling with their mental health. And we pray especially by name for Wyatt and Garrett Ruthven, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret Gilmore, Luke Firth, Sandra Mello, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Michelle Jenkins, Audrey Wilkinson, and Ethel Hadfield. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Your Son Jesus Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection, 
and will reap the harvest of the dead at the end of time. We pray that he will gather us all together with those who have gone before in the banquet of the age to come. And we remember especially those who have recently died, Bill Ragg, Gladys Jones and Jackie Burns. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Source of all life and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the peace. I always think it's funny how in uh, the Old Testament um, inanimate objects are kind of personified. Um, so there's a little verse here from Isaiah, which kind of always makes me laugh because the concept of a field clapping their hands, it's just it's quite funny. <laughs> you shall go out with joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills sh before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So we offer one another a sign of peace in a safe way. <laughs> May I like to be seated while I just prepare the altar? Please stand. This prayer, the preparation of the table, comes from very early on um, in church worship. It was written in the third century. As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, and now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I will share with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give thanks to the praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. Through him you have created us in your own image, and made us stewards of your good creation. Through him you teach us to exult in the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, the precious and life-giving crops of the earth. Through him you free us from the slavery of sin, giving him to die upon the cross and to rise again for our salvation. Through him you begin your work of new creation as we look for a new heaven and a new earth in which your righteousness dwells. Therefore we join with angels and archangels and give voice to every creature under heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And as they obey, this command. Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine are poured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of hell. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death to the Lord of the Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be here.
love in creation and have shared in the bread and the wine of the kingdom. By your grace, grant within us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for leading us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. He stands that you are able to do so. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow our heads to receive God's blessing. May God the Father, who clothes the lilies of the field and feeds the birds of the air, provide us with all we need for life in its fullness. Amen. May God the Son, who fed the five thousand and turned water into wine, feed us with his life and transform us in his love. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, who hovered over the waters of creation and formed the world from chaos, form in us the likeness of Christ and renew the face of the earth. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.